first tonight when Mike Duncan started a podcast on the history of ancient Rome. He had absolutely no idea what it would turn into. At the beginning, its audience literally numbered in the dozens, but its popularity exploded. And by now, the podcast has been downloaded more than 100 million times. Mike Duncan is also the author of Hero of Two Worlds, a biography of the Revolutionary War hero, the Marquis de Lafayette. Duncan came to Maine recently to speak at, at, at an event for the General Henry Knox Museum in Thomaston, and we sat down to talk in Portland. First of all, I feel like I'm kind of getting this conversation off on the wrong foot by having it here when we could be just down on the waterfront at a fish market or a fish processing sure, operation. Sure. And why would that have been fitting? <laughs> that would be fitting uh, probably because I spent five years of my life working as a fishmonger. And uh, when I started my career in podcasting, I had to have a day job because it didn't actually pay the bills. And my day job was cutting and selling fish. What did you like or dislike about cutting fish? I loved being able to walk out with fish uh, basically for free. Uh, I never had to pay retail for any of the seafood that I was eating. <laughs> that is by far the best part of working as a fishmonger. Uh, I would like actually to maybe work one day a week for somebody uh, just so that I could walk out with the, uh, you know, the bags of salmon and the bags of scallops and the bags of mussels uh, for cut rate prices. So to make the transition yeah. from being a fishmonger to being a podcaster specializing in history, yeah. is there anyone on planet Earth who has ever done that beside you? Uh, maybe not that particular combination. <laughs> there have always been, you know, uh, you know, Einstein was a patent clerk, and so I guess I just compared myself to Einstein, which is probably not a comparison that actually holds up to any scrutiny whatsoever. Um, but you know, you were saying like, what's another, like, what did I like about being a fishmonger? Part of it was that I could just go and I could do that job during the day. And it didn't actually require a great deal of, you know, intellectual capacity to cut fish and sell fish. Um, and so I could save all of that, like creative energy, intellectual energy, uh, for working on the podcasts. Starting a podcast and having its subject be a history of Rome sounds like just a great way to get a listenership in the high double digits. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yet it took off and uh -huh. became hugely popular. I'm still not entirely sure how that happened. The history of Rome is me. There's no sound effects. There's no music. It's just me talking in a sort of very sedate, monotone way. Um, for it, it winds up being 72 hours of material of going through Roman history from, from you know, the arrival of Aeneas through the fall of Romulus Augustulus. And yeah, I can remember, and my wife reminds me of when I was so excited that 100 people had subscribed to this podcast that I had started. And I was like, this is amazing. Like 100 people are listening to this. And so now anytime I'm walking around and she's like, well, do you remember how excited you were when 100 people were listening to you. Like, yes, I do, yes. Your interest in the American Revolution is what led you to the Marquis de Lafayette, who is the subject of your biography. He's one of those figures whom we all heard, at least heard his name when we were in school, and yep. we know maybe a sentence or two yes, about the Marquis de Lafayette. Yes, at least one kid in the class had to do a book report about the Marquis de Lafayette. I had to do my book report on uh, Cornwallis. Uh, well, let me start with this. Can you give us the full name of the Marquis oh, de Lafayette? God, good God, no. Um, Gibert. I call him Gibert because um, his first name was actually, uh, it's, in English, it would read as Gilbert, uh, but he's Gibert. And then it's a bunch of names. It's and about yeah, it, 10 or 11 yeah, names. Yeah, it's, like, it's like 10 or 11 names. And he, he said, uh, he actually said at one point, he was making fun of himself, that he was named after like every saint in the Pantheon. Um, but that the only saint that he ever truly relied on was Saint Gibert, which is himself. What was it about the Marquis de Lafayette that made you want to devote several years of your life to writing about it? Um, it's all the other stuff that happens after that, really. Um, he does show up in the American Revolution as this, you know, runaway teenager who has um, washed up on the shores of America to help the Continental Army, and uh, you know Washington adopts him like a lost puppy in a way. And, and a teenager. And and a, he, I mean, he's, and he's, and he's a stunning he, fact. You know, he, he wasn't even twenty. No, he he's gets on the boat at the age of nineteen, um, and he comes and he he legitimately was enormously influential in uh, affecting the alliance between the United States and France. And if uh, the Continental Army and the Second Continental Congress don't form that alliance with France, like we don't win that war. That's just how it goes. You want a life that has a dramatic arc, 
just the fact that he went from being this young hero of the American Revolution to, during the French Revolution, a guy who gets thrown in prison yep. for five years. Yes, yeah. And so Lafayette was the hero of two worlds in 1789. And yeah, by 1792, he is, he literally crosses the border out of France in the middle of the night to avoid a, uh, a warrant for his arrest that would almost certainly have led to his execution. You obviously have an enormous passion for history, so let's ask the time travel question. We'll fire up the Wayback Machine. Oh, yeah. You can go to any place at any time in history. Where would you like to go? Oh, um, you know what? I am going to throw this whole thing like a major curveball. I am a huge baseball fan. Okay, and there were some Negro League All-Star games in the 1930s, where every great Negro League player was on the field at the same time. Satchel Paige, Josh Gibson, Turkey Stearns, like all these guys. Um, I would love to go and watch those games, which I know has nothing to do with anything that we were just talking about. I think that comes completely out of answer. Idea. But man, alive, those would be some good games to go see. And the other thing is a lot of the past is really like smelly and violent and dirty um, and full of diseases. So I also kind of like shy away from maybe like going to Rome in the summer. Like people are like, wouldn't you want to go back to the age of the Antonines? And like, what, get malaria and die? Like, no thanks. So we got that cleared up. For the record, Lafayette's full name, Marie-Joseph Paul-Yves roche Gibert de Motier, the Marquis de Lafayette. Mike Duncan's current podcast is called Revolutions, and it too is hugely popular. What a great interview. He's a fascinating guy. That was fun. All right, coming up next on